Hey guys, how are you doing? It's your boy Angry Veteran. Uh, back for a live. Well, I'm just back, okay? <laughs> if you all haven't noticed already, but I'm sure y'all have. Um, so I'm going to do a basic tutorial, not really on how to necessarily draw things and stuff like that. Not, not, not for this tutorial. Um, it's just going to be a basic tutorial on, you know, your channel art design, uh, your profile picture, channel art thumbnails etc etc um the rest of the items is completely entirely up to you now before going forward there is a disclaimer uh, i have or i had a recording of this but for the first 15 minutes of that recording my mic was muted so nothing was being recorded recorded um so <laughs> it was just a bunch of mouse clicks and nothing and the rest is history so without further ado let's get right into it i don't want to sit here and bore you guys to death uh i do know uh that as your captain speaking here on this uh flight that we're on the angry veteran uh airlines is that i can get a little monotone at times and boring and long-winded so all right so we're going to start with channel art um so uh, before I go into channel art and design and your channel art designs and whatnot, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the art program that I'm currently using. It is Autobook Sketchbook, Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Um, uh, it used to require an email to get, but it's, it is a free program. It is a free software that you can get. Um, I'm going to include the links for the mentioned programs down in the description below with the exception of two. Because uh, one of them is actually, well, actually, one you can get if you have an iMac. Um, the other one, I think, is just solely for iPad. Um, so, but uh, I'll try to include a link to that as well um, for those of you who are iPad users and whatnot. And I'll go in a little bit of details, not too much about those uh, softwares or those art programs and design programs. Uh, but the one I'm using is Autodesk Sketchbook. It's, ba it's a basic... Uh, sketch pad type of software um, it is per it is pretty powerful for how basic it is um, and I'll give you a quick rundown of the user interface real quick uh, this box to your left on the top is going to be the layer box that's where you would do all your layers like you can do a sketch layer first and then a secondary sketch layer to find out the lines and details and then you could do an actual draw layer or pen layer, and that's where you would actually do your actual lines. Um, and this this is the method that I work. Other artists have different methods for uh, building uh, characters, uh, people, persons, or whatever they're doing, uh, characters and whatnot. So um, it does have fill, it does have layer effects. Um, they're not robust, super robust, but they are. It is a, a good set for how basic this program is. Um, over here on the right hand side on the top is your brush library now the good one of the cool things with autodesk sketchbook is that you can download different brushes and and this is the same among all art programs really um but this um but this one has a set sets of brushes that they generally update every once in a while um, that you can download here that'll automatically download and install to the program there are other packages where you have to download them and manually kind of import them into uh, autodesk sketchbook but nonetheless uh, the ones that a sketchbook offers automatic through uh through the let's see sketchbook extras uh install or input import automatically uh, you do have to have an internet connection for this um, Okay, so, and over here is a color wheel. I like to use it. Um, you can use other things. You can do RGB or hexadecimal as well. Um, so for basically what it is, a basic uh, art program, it is pretty robust for what it is. Um, it's not, doesn't have a bunch of uh, features to it like you would get out of, per se, Photoshop or, or, or Krita or um, more other softwares. It's not as robust as those softwares, but for what it does, it has a lot of tools and features that you can use to your advantage, and it is free um, for those of you who are on a budget. Uh, it does text, however, it does not do 
Um, the only vector art in this would be the text, and you can actually rasterize. And what that means to rasterize is basically make it uh, a pixel or, or um, modifiable with with uh, the pens and whatnot over here. Um, but essentially, that's the only vector art that's in this program is the text. You can't really manipulate it too much. Like, you can't make it a circular text. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to kind of just eyeball and do it manually yourself. Um, there are tricks and ways to do that, but we're not going to cover that here. Um, so, all right, let's uh, get going. So, what you see before you is a basic template of channel art, or the basic template for channel art. Uh, the what's here in the middle in the blue box is going to be where you want to is what's considered the safe area is what YouTube calls a safe area this and this is where you're going to want to put all your eye-catching art right here and I just noticed it's the same color so let's change the color all right so this is basically where you want to put all your art all your eye-catching stuff like We'll just draw a little smiley face and do, I'll just use me as an example. You don't have to do this necessarily, the same setup or necessarily the same thing. You can do it any, how, any, way, which you, any which way you want. It's your creation. You get creative with it. Um, you don't necessarily have to draw your own stuff. You can import images. And in Sketchbook, you would just go to File and Add Image, and, would, and you choose the image that you want to import and to here. Um, I will do later tutorials on how to do those specific things, but for just the sake of time and argument, and what we're what I'm trying to get get accomplished here or teach here is, we're just gonna go ahead and bypass that for the time being. So the blue area is essentially your safe area that's where you want to want to put your text logos and all that and uh, so um, up here is what users are going to see on the TV they're going to view this whole area essentially on the TV this whole thing so basically it will be your eye-catching art and stuff here and then it'll be kind of like background images or a gradient fill if you want to do that and I'll go into detail and I'll go into detail about what a gradient gradient fill is basically a gradient fill is you start let's say you have red and then it transitions to blue so uh, in this program or in Autodesk offers that as a as a feature and basically what it is is you set it up to where one side's red and then the software will render it to transition to blue and so that's what a gradient fill is um, there's many different ones um, different types, different versions. It just depends on the software you have. So, uh, desktop max is basically what's going to be visible on the desktop view um, from end to end. But you don't want to like have your text come all the way out to here. You want your text in the safe area because that's going to be visible across all platforms. Tablets are generally here. Um, everything that's within these confines are visible. But again, always refer to this. And if and I, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to where you can get this template and download it. And you're going to want to make your canvas size or your image size this size right here. This is the size you want to make it. The 2560 by 1440 pixels. Those are pixels, by the way, even though they're not labeled as such. They are pixels. So just remember that when you, when you do this on your own. Is that these numbers are referring to pixels all right so that's how big you want to make your image and then when you import this uh, template into here what you can do is go into lay into layer in any software that you use and make it transparent or make it as uh, transparent as you need so that way it doesn't interfere with what you're actually trying to accomplish art wise or design wise but it's always to keep it it's always good to keep it somewhat visible so you can have a reference point um, so you can adjust uh, for things accordingly. All right, so that is the channel art in a nutshell. That's the basic one. Um, now I do. Now I will say this uh, on the mobile devices. If you notice that user profile icons appear right here. Generally speaking, they either appear right there or they appear right there. But I 
I don't ever think I ever see them right here. So do keep that in mind when you are designing that if you do have lettering that it will get cut off at some point either on the right, on the left, middle, or right. So do keep that in mind. All right, so that's the channel art part. Now we're going to talk about YouTube thumbnails. Now, we're, now, if you've been uploading videos, you can pretty much skip this part. You already know about YouTube thumbnails, especially if you're good at designing them on your own. But generally, you want to use, well, well, you don't want to, or you don't have to use, but generally what people do is they'll take a still shot from their actual video and include it as the thumbnail with some added text or, you know, a diff another picture that they posted in or pasted in, you know, to, to grab the viewer's eye. Um, so when you take still shots from your video editor, they're primarily going to be this, uh, format and in this size, uh, they'll generally be 1280 by 720 uh, pixels because that's normally what the, what YouTube videos are formatted as. Um, so yeah. Um, so, you know, generally speaking, uh, take a good still shot or if you want you can actually within your video create a scene where it includes where the screenshot is included and then you can take a still shot of that point in your video and include it as your thumbnail put some text generally it's good to have text down on the bottom that way they can see the main parts of the video up here the still shot you created and uh, have the text on the bottom or on the sides at least and then if you want to add like a meme picture or something like that. All right, so that is YouTube thumbnails in a nutshell. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a uh, profile or have a, uh, sorry, user profile pictures. So as I was saying, you event you essentially want it 800 by 800 pixels. Um, the best way to create one if you want to make one yourself is to make a circle that will fit if you have a circle tool or if you don't have a circle tool it's, fun. it's okay to try to make the circle as best you can. And just make a little circle within that square or within those confines and then design If I can get it right. Anyways, y'all get the idea. But just make a circle within those confines that you can actually draw your uh, your artwork in or your profile picture. This other stuff will still be kind of viewable under certain circumstances, but for the most part, anything within this circle right here is going to be what's viewable on the uh, on your channel or anytime it sees your profile uh, pop up in the live stream live chat or discussions or comment section all right so um and you can also take any existing image uh youtube's um built-in some of the built-in features on their website will take a existing image if it's not too large and we'll use that and will allow you to edit it and crop it to where you can use it as a profile picture. Um, they, on the website, it says the guidelines, uh, I think, either less than 2 megabytes, I think, or less than or greater to, greater, less than or equal to 2 megabytes, I believe, or maybe 8 megabytes, something like that. Uh, I'm not completely sure you can check the website out for full details on it. Um, so now we're going to get into software. All right. Some of the free software that's out there that you can get is a uh, Krita, which is a full featured um, open source uh, art slash design program. They have some vector feature. It has some vector features in the, in it built into it. Um, it takes a little getting used to, uh, it does take some time to learn it, uh, but for the most part, you can actually download and install and jump right into it, um, as almost instantaneously, if you're just going to be doing like drawing and artwork and stuff like that. 
that's a lot of it's very simple to use um keep in mind that on older computers and older laptops it does have a <laughs> a knack to uh crash out so um it will do kind of like a recovery save if that happens it'll uh, it'll automatically save the file and try to recover it upon reopening or relaunching the program um however sometimes that doesn't always work uh, but for the most part, th those are some of the downsides to it, and it's quite a large uh, software. Um, not as large as Photoshop or anything like that, but it, it does have the about about the same features Photoshop has, and they're always adding to it. Um, so Krita is is a, is a good one, and I'll be providing links for where you can download these softwares. Uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, what I'm using now, I've already talked about Autodesk Sketchbook a little bit, or I've already talked about Autodesk Sketchbook. Uh, Inkscape is another one. Um, this one is more uh, for, it's another open source software. It's got a lot of features in it, and it does take time to get used to. You can't just download and install it, jump right into it. I mean, you could use it to, uh, you know, start drawing and sketching out stuff um the but the user interface isn't so um isn't so straightforward you kind of have to get go through it and experiment with different things to uh learn it um so if so there that's the drawback to it it's not a simple user interface the website says it is it's unless you've been using art software and design software for a long time and you're just jumping into it, it's going to be kind of difficult to use. I would, I would kind of say stay away from Inkscape if you're if you're beginning this. Um, I mean, if you want to, if you still want to download it and has it as an asset or a tool in your uh, toolbox, by all means, still uh, you know go ahead and download and install it and play around in it. Um, oh, another good thing about Inkscape is that it opens and uh, saves many different file formats or many different image formats um, including ones that are uh, it opens ones that come off the iPhone like certain specific formats that other software won't open or that you'll have to download like some sketchy ass software off the internet Inkscape will open those uh, will open that open those files and Inkscape is also used in um, drafting as well so uh, there are some some basic drafting type tools um, but it's more or less for viewing not really for altering a already created draft and what I mean by drafting I mean more like engineer <coughs> engineer drafting the next one you have is GIMP GIMP is a simple it, it's like a simple it, it's more advanced than Microsoft Paint but it's simpler than Autodesk Sketchbook it, it's Essentially, what it is is just a paint software. Uh, you can draw, sketch, paint, create layers. Um, it gives you some effects, layer effects, but not much. Um, it's pretty basic. Um, it's good for starters if you're just starting out and want to get, you know, learn the ropes. Um, it's another open source software. Um, they do all these open source softwares do have stable builds. And then, of course, if you don't want to download any of this, you still have Microsoft Paint that's built into Microsoft. Um, and for anybody now, Microsoft Paint has come a long, a long way. They've added a lot more things to it, but it's it's Paint. It's still a basic software. But, however, if that's what you have at your disposal and you don't feel like downloading things or trying to learn something new or trying to learn something complex or anything like that, um, Paint's a good option uh, to use since it's already built into Microsoft anyways or into the Windows operating system. So those are some of the free ones. Um, now we're going to get into the paid ones. All right, so some of these you'll you some of these some of you will be familiar with. Uh, some of them you won't. Now I know Adobe Illustrator is at the top. I'm going to start with Photoshop. Photoshop is a was intended as a photo editing software. However, comma slash hyphen uh, curvy symbol. 
you can use Photoshop to draw, paint, and create, and do layer effects. And Photoshop is full featured. Um, it's got everything you could ever want. It's got different brush types, different pen types, pencils, anything you could ever want in an art software. However, the major drawback is that it does take some time to get used to. Um, and it's and and you do you would have to watch uh, some video tutorials to grasp some of the features in it. Um, you can play around in it and you know try to figure it out on your own. And if that works for you, that works for you. But to fully grasp a lot of the features, you have to use. It'd be best to watch some of the video tutorials on it. Um, you have Adobe Illustrator, which is the next step down. Um, it's not as full featured as Photoshop, however. It still has a lot. It's more Illustrator is more of a drawing, draw, sketching pad type deal. Um, it does have tons of features in it, um, and you can do a lot with it. It's just not as full featured as Photoshop. Um, then you have Clip Art Studio Pro, which is another paid software, which you'll see a lot of artists use here on YouTube, especially the ones that do a lot of speed draws and speed paints, or you know, do art here on YouTube. They this is the major one that a lot of them use is Clip Art Studio Pro. Uh, it's full featured. It has many different things, many different tools, uh, features. Um, it even has some vector art features. Um, it, it's 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 pretty full featured. And I'm gonna leave again. I'm gonna leave links for all this software down in the description below. Uh, for Procreate, this is an Apple only product. Um, now, I'm not sure if you can get it on the iMac, but I do know that it is available on iPad and the iPhone. They have a mobile version for the iPhone. Oh, by the way, for Autodesk Sketchbook, you can get this as a mobile version as well. Um, and it is still free. Uh, Procreate is last When I bought it, it was $9.99 plus tax uh, from the Apple Store. So it is well worth the money. Um, and you get any future, you don't have to pay for any future updates or any new versions that come out because they're just going to all appropriate and update through anything new that they come out with for Procreate. It's going to go all to Procreate. You won't have to buy anything else. And that's the good thing about purchasing that. It's $9.99 plus tax, which makes it about $10.36 or $10.50 or something like that. But it's well worth it. Um, it is full featured, not as full featured as Photoshop, um, but it does have a lot of tools, features, and a lot of things. It also screen records as well while you're doing the art. Uh, and then for more advanced users and designers, there's Affinity Designer, which um, I also have. That is about twenty. Twenty four ninety nine, I want to say, or nineteen ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine. I can't remember. Um, Affinity is a company that makes different kinds of uh, softwares for drawing. They have they have other things besides Affinity Designer, but that's the Affinity Designer deals primarily with vector art. And uh, what I mean by vector art is that uh, instead of just doing paint and all that, you're working with curves, uh, segments, lines, um, and you can. You're able to uh, alter your lines and manipulate them, um, and I'll and I'll talk about that in a later tutorial. Um, so those are your paid softwares. All right, guys. So that's the basic tutorial. I know I've dragged it out, and I didn't want it to be this long. I'll probably just make it shorter, post edit, um, cut out a lot of things. Um, but that's the basics. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me questions in the comments down below, or you can reach out to me at Angry Veteran on Twitter. Um, I'll, I'll, my link for my social media will be down in the description below. And uh, so, yeah, um, stay tuned for a speed draw that's speed paint coming up soon. I think you guys like it, um, and it's going to pretty much... Uh, the theme of it is, I guess, my comeback, you could say, my quote-unquote comeback, <laughs> which is laughable in its own right. So um, I don't really consider me coming back a, come, a real comeback. It's just, you know, my in 
you know, my interest has been piqued and et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, so yeah, expect a speed paint and speed draw coming up soon. And um, hope to see you guys there. All right.